Many of you have commented on my videos this year asking why a tech head like myself might have an old tube TV that shows up in the background of some videos. That TV, a Sony Trinitron widescreen HD CRT TV, was actually my holy grail of TV finds for quite some time. I touched on this in my retro gaming setup tour if you want a primer. You might need it, as the answer to the title of this video is both a strong yes and a harsh no. I'm Abel's Box, and in this video we'll be deep diving into why you should or should not buy an old CRT television in 2017. Buckle up. Before we get too technical or complicated, I want to provide a basic answer to the question that's rising in popularity as of late. If you just want an old TV to play your own game consoles and dive a bit into nostalgia, go for it. Since they're illegal and dangerous to dispose of yourself, it's fairly easy to find CRTs for cheap or free if you pick them up. Make sure they have the connections you need and aren't too large, you don't want to get a huge one and then have nothing to do with it if you change your mind, and be on your way. But if you have specific desires for it, or you think the TVs will provide a truly superior experience to modern televisions, stick around. Let's get vocab and history out of the way first. CRT means cathode ray tube, and the TVs work by shooting electrons from a cathode in the back of the box to the front. This is different than the supersized rear projection TVs of the early 2000s and very different than how modern LCD and LED TVs work. CRT technology was also widely used for computer monitors as well. These are worth a look if you don't mind the size, but that's a conversation for another video. CRT TVs are big, bulky, heavy, and don't support modern video connections. So they're useless, right? Well, that common perception is only partially true. They do take up more room than flat screen TVs, but they aren't always huge. CRTs are available in a plethora of sizes, colors, and even shapes. There's a lot more personality to CRTs than the flat black design of just about every modern TV. And not all CRTs have the bubbled out screen that's so prone to glares. There's a variety of flat screen models out there. My HD CRT is flat screened and it's quite nice in a room full of lights. There's a few reasons that people are starting to want CRT TVs again. Nostalgia, compatibility with older video hardware such as VCRs and Laserdisc players, or to play retro video games. Most of this choice, other than direct compatibility concerns, comes down to user preference and subjective qualifications of TV sets. But there are actually a couple ways in which CRT TVs are legitimately superior to modern TVs. Perceived depth or dynamic range and input latency. We'll touch on these first. Now before you go leaving an angry comment about, oh, too, too, too late, technically normal LCD or LED TVs and CRT TVs have the same dynamic range. This is referred to as standard dynamic range, or SDR, a light variance measurement, or maximum luminance of 100 nits. This has been the standard for a very long time, as it was based on the limits of CRT technology. Only recently are we seeing a change to this with HDR technology for new OLED TVs. It will be a while before this becomes mainstream, but I'm super stoked to see HDR become the new normal. The issue here is in how different types of TV actually display light. Despite having the same measured dynamic range, CRTs and plasma TVs actually appear to the eye to be better in this regard. Some often refer to this as the TV's image having more depth. Blacks appear deeper, whites appear brighter, colors pop more. LCDs more often look flat due to the backlighting's inability to vary brightness enough, or on a per pixel basis like OLED can. Many have tried conveying this bit of why they prefer a CRT image but haven't been able to properly explain what they mean by depth. But this is it. Older films with practical effects that are hurt by sharpness or higher resolution, more punchy and stylistic films, etc. all can look a lot better on a CRT than a flat looking LCD. But it is still personal preference. We'll touch on resolution in a minute, but I did want to add in here that if you're considering something like a CRT, Keep in mind that this should, in all likelihood, be something that you add to an arsenal of media-consuming options, not a replacement for your high-end TV. 
Modern games and some modern films and TV shows want to take advantage of their new high-definition formatting and thus rely more heavily on small, sharp details rather than a punchy style. CRTs inherently have much lower resolutions than modern TVs, and I have found myself to get headaches from eye strain trying to play newer shooters or watch streams with a lot of text on even my big HD CRT unless I'm sitting right on top of it. It's just softer. The other serious point I mentioned before was input latency or input lag. Digital equals processing time equals input delay. It's always there, even if it's low enough that you can't detect it. However, generally speaking, analog means no input lag. It's not quite that simple, I know, but a good rule to keep in mind. There are digital CRTs too. These are the HD CRTs, like the one I have. These were released during the end of the CRT era, mainly by Sony as part of the legendary Trinitron line, and actually have digital conversion happening, which can add input lag. These actually go from analog to digital back to analog, unless you have a digital connection hooked up, in which case it's digital to analog. This is worth noting for purists and those focusing on twitchy games. I've not had any trouble with my HD CRT, but anytime I post about it in Facebook groups, there are a lot of people who dislike it for the input lag. I, okay. <laughs> HD CRTs will also not play light gun games as a result. Any 4x3 aspect ratio normal CRT will be fine, however, as they are analog only. And yes, no input lag is glorious in the only way some people will play games. In fact, I'm now digging into a particular CRT PC monitor for this very reason, if I can get my hands on it. Platformers, rhythm games, fighting games, and shooters all benefit heavily from the lack of input lag. Just remember that the controller, game console, and any audio video switchers and so on all play a role in input latency as well. You may be used to playing modern game consoles on LCD or LED TVs and be confused as to why someone might complain about input lag that you've never noticed. It may not be a big deal for digital 1080p signals to be displayed on your 1080p TV, but that's because it's the native signal. If you hook up older game consoles to your TV, the TV itself has to upscale the signal, often to crazy extents to come from 240p and such, which adds a lot of lag to the experience and the TVs just aren't made to handle these signals, so it often winds up not looking quite right or having more input lag. 240p, 480i, 480p, and sometimes even 720p and 1080i if your analog TV accepts the signal, it will display it nicely and cleanly. And in fact, displaying lower resolution signals on a TV with more vertical resolution is actually a look some gamers prefer. This creates the phenomena known as scan lines, where you can see the space between pixels being displayed, usually in horizontal rows. To some, this is the fundamental requirement for the retro look. I, myself, am not currently sold on the idea just yet, but I get the appeal. That's another reason why I'm happy with my HD CRT where others are not. To me, it displays consoles like the PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 via S-Video perfectly cleanly, but without scan lines, it's basically heresy to others. To each their own. Compatibility is a huge selling point for CRTs too. On top of image processing issues that I've already touched on, the actual inputs are important too. You can get CRTs that accept RF signals, composite, S-video, and even component, all for analog video glory. Of what I just listed, component is the best. Component can actually carry 720p and 1080i HD signals too, which is how I have most things hooked up to on my HD CRT TV. But if you're using an analog CRT, you're likely maxed at 480i or 480p if you're lucky. This means you can connect anything from the old wood grain Atari boxes to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Pretty impressive. But there's another connection type that is superior to composite and S video, and even to component, depending on who you ask. The Almighty SCART, or RGB. You might not have heard of this, and that's because this was not a supported connection on TVs in North America, mainly just Europe. Japan had a very similar connection called JP21, though it is wired a little bit differently. This is a big, wide, multi-pin plug that carries RGB and sync signal to the TV for a much more accurate color representation and sharper signal to the screen. Despite TVs not supporting this in the States, some consoles like the PlayStation 1 and 2 still output this natively from the multi-out port, 
and most consoles can be easily modded to output this signal as well. This is great for a few different applications. If you choose not to go the CRT route and stick with your modern TV, you can get a fancy video scaler like the XRGB Mini Frame Meister, which does a lot better job scaling up the signal than your TV will, and can do so more cleanly by using RGB inputs. You can mod some home CRT sets to accept RGB inputs, though the value of this is questionable to me at the moment. The other use for RGB output is to connect consoles to another type of CRT TV that we haven't talked about. Most CRTs you see or hear about are consumer televisions, but there were CRTs used for professional reasons too. Video production, television broadcasting, and so on. These are generally grouped together and referred to as PVMs. However, the PVM acronym specifically actually refers to Sony's Trinitron Professional Video Monitor line. They also had some BVM, or broadcast video monitors, as well, which can be of higher quality than the PVMs. Other companies such as JVC and Panasonic also made professional video monitors just called color video monitors or CVMs. There were also medical video monitors which often have a very nice white look. I don't think they're referred to as MVMs, but that's sort of what they are. I have a couple of the color video monitors from the 1990s here. Whatever you call them, they have higher quality screens and phosphors and tend to provide a much higher quality image than consumer TV sets. They come in a variety of sizes, from this tiny one here to a much more medium size here to about a 28 inch or so size as well. Now, not all of them support RGB inputs, but many do, and these are highly sought after by retro gamers as the CRT to game on for high quality retro gaming. Even if you can get one without RGB, it's still probably one of the best composite or S-video gaming experiences you can have. The first time I hooked up the PS1 via composite to this little JVC one here, I was blown away by how amazing the original Crash Bandicoot can look. It's so good. If you want more information about RGB and how to set it up, check out the My Life in Gaming YouTube channel. They make great guides about RGB setups and hardware. So there's really three main kinds of CRT TVs that you can probably get. Standard 4x3 analog consumer TVs, newer digital widescreen HD CRTs, and professional PVMs, BVMs, and CVMs. There are more variants than that, and even analog widescreens, but these are the main ones that we run across. Another thing that I recently discovered while spending a sick week on my couch recently is that web video can actually benefit greatly by being displayed through a CRT compared to an LCD screen. Keep the issue with small, sharp details and text in mind though. The lower resolution and the way CRTs present an image mean that I virtually never see compression blocking from live streams or lower quality YouTube videos. It may be my favorite way to watch Twitch now. Blocking and muddiness from low bitrate footage drives me nuts on my normal screens, but isn't really noticeable on my CRT. Pretty crazy. But choose wisely, as things are not all sunshine and rainbows on the CRT front. As I mentioned before, that HD CRTs like my not-so-mini Trini actually perform digital processing like a modern TV and thus will have some input lag and probably no scan lines. That's something you need to look out for. Also, some CRTs only have RF antenna inputs, sadly. I just recently picked up a clear TV as part of a two-set and the clear one only has that input. It can still be used for super old pre-Nintendo consoles and NES and such. If I want an inferior signal, but otherwise, I have to use a composite to RF adapter. It works and somehow looks better than normal RF, but it isn't perfect. And again, the size and weight are a big deal. It may not sound like it at first, but it really is. Once you start getting into the 32 plus inch size range, these things can weigh over 200 pounds. And it's by no means an evenly distributed weight. It's all in the front. I was able to move the old Magnavox I had around, but to even move my Trinitron forward with the stand, I needed to wait on someone to help me. I'm not a super buff guy, but I don't exactly run into many instances where I can't move something, at least scoot it across the floor. This thing won't budge over the lip onto my carpet. 
You also need a hefty TV stand for the bigger sets. The softness of the image is a big deal here. Despite our parents always misinformedly telling us not to sit so close to the TV, sitting far away from it will lead to eye strain. I'm wanting to move mine forward a few inches as trying to focus on small details from my couch isn't fun. So then you either need to sit much closer to it or get a bigger TV, which means more bulk and more weight. Also the smaller the screen, the sharper the image will appear, but tiny screens do get a little awkward to play on. And if you bite off more than you can chew with a giant CRT, it's not something you can easily get rid of either. There's the issue of physically moving it, sure, but that's not something you can just dispose of. You should never put electronics in the trash, but rather send them to recycling centers or send in programs such as through Staples. But it's actually illegal to put CRT TVs and monitors in the trash. They're dangerous to waste employees and to the environment. Some cities have recycling centers you can drop them off at, but the in locations are actually nothing but a stockpile of these as they've been completely unable to keep up with the disassembly process. If you do need to get rid of one, I highly request you start with Craigslist, local Facebook seller groups, let go and offer up. Don't expect to get much money for it, but list it for free and someone will take it. Or put it on the edge of your yard near the street with a free sign on it and pickers will likely grab it. While CRTs were built to last, they are often very old at this point and can have issues. Geometry issues seem to be most common, where the picture starts to skew, become off-center, or certain areas of the image just get totally jacked up. Often these are fixable, but who's going to fix it? There aren't repair shops anymore and most of the people who knew how to fix them are fading away. And don't think it's like a modern computer or something that you can just crack open and fix yourself. The capacitors and CRTs carry enough voltage to kill you, and the draining process is still pretty risky and scary. HD CRTs like mine have an HDMI input, but often they don't process it correctly. Ones like mine sometimes apply a huge, uneven overscan to the HDMI input, which has all but made it useless for me. This is theoretically fixable through the service menus with an official remote for the TV, but it's also not that easy either. The service menus are hard to navigate, not well documented, and provide much risk for screwing things up with no real fix. Plus, from what I've come to understand, if you adjust to compensate for an overscan, it affects all inputs, not just the HDMI. So then your analog inputs will be underscanned. There's no real winning here. I use my HDMI input with a 50 foot HDMI cable running to my PC so I can watch a web video on it, but run everything else via component to avoid this issue. That being said, there are quite a few HD models that have no trouble with this, especially from the Sony XBR line. CRTs release a lot of static from the screen upon powering on and can often produce a very high-pitched sound. If you went to elementary school with CRT TVs, you may remember being annoyed by hearing this from a TV left on in a classroom, but not everyone could hear it. Some can even see the actual image flicker or refresh if things aren't perfectly in sync. These two can lead to users getting headaches from CRT usage, which can really suck. The bubbled screen TVs provide better viewing angles but can also wind up with a lot more serious glares, too. A glass screen plus a light in front of it will not get along well. I can't make the choice of picking up a CRT for you. It can be an easy decision. Oh, pick up this little old TV to play old consoles. Or it can be a super involved process, depending on how you want to approach it. I can't, in good faith, blindly just say, yeah, go buy one. But I do think it can be a good experience for many with an open mind. I started with the medium-sized Magnavox from my childhood that began to give me headaches and currently now have seven CRT TVs in my apartment three CVMs, a HD CRT, two small normal CRTs, and then a new one that's completely busted that I just picked up, which is a 34 inch 4x3 HD CRT. And I haven't even started bringing in PC monitors yet, but again, that's for a different video. There are options available to you, factors to consider, use cases to really evaluate, and risks involved. But a CRT TV can be an amazing gaming and movie watching experience. As far as picking up CRTs goes, look for local Facebook yard sale and general trade groups, Craigslist, the let go and offer up apps, 
actual yard and garage sales, things like that. If you want to get serious about CRTs, consider joining a Facebook group that I'm a part of called the CRT Collective, linked in the video description. To get your hands on a PVM, you might want to consider contacting local news stations and seeing if they have any remaining in storage that they would be willing to part with. Some have had success with that, I'm still waiting to hear back from mine. Just remember that eBay won't be great since these are not exactly easy to ship. I'm Evil's Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive video. It's by no means a complete guide, but should be enough to get you started down the rabbit hole should you desire. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more awesome tech videos and random deep dives like this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Also consider joining our inner circle of Patreon subscribers where you can get early access to videos and other cool features. Vox is a Patreon-supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support 